Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Professor Forte, you were starting to give a quote from Lincoln. Uh, I would love to hear you finish that quote. Yes, sir. I, if I may, I, there were two points I wanted to make. First of all, uh, Mr. Raskin mis quote, misstated the bill. The bill has a very serious exception for women whose health will be seriously impacted. Secondly, what Lincoln said about Dred Scott was the, that the court should not dictate matters of fundamental policy that Congress can address. And he urged Congress over and over again to pass legislation so that the court would have a chance to overrule its precedent. Martin Luther King kept pressing. He didn't lie down and say, oh, Plessy versus Ferguson gives the states a constitutional right to separate people on the basis of race, therefore we can't do anything about it. That was fundamental for 50 years. They were not going to do anything about it. No, those people understood what a wrong decision was, what the impact of separation was, and Congress, I think, now can understand and tell the Supreme Court what the impact of heartbeat and abortion is on real people in the womb. Well, Professor, I would uh, also add, uh, talking to someone at the Supreme Court um, who was there for many years, um, this individual told me that in all the decades he had worked at the court, he never saw the justices more completely shocked than they were after the Roe versus Wade decision at the reaction of the American public. They were shocked. They could not believe uh, that there were that many people upset about their legalizing abortion because apparently at all the cocktail parties they attended, people said, oh yes, certainly a woman should be able to decide to kill what was in her. Um, and they were just shocked. And they, one other, it was second on the list behind that shock. But anyway, it appears that what often happens at the Supreme Court, and you can see it in the current decisions, you can see it in the decision on Obamacare, that decisions are made at the Supreme Court based on what a majority believe is political correctness. And apparently the White House got sufficient uh, fear injected into the Supreme Court that if they struck down Obamacare, since the Republicans did not have a bill ready to go, that people would lose their insurance and people would die and it would be the Supreme Court's fault. So although we like to think that the Supreme Court's in ivory towers and they do nothing but look at the Constitution and make decisions uh, that tell us what the Constitution actually says, it's very clear it is a place of political correctness run amok far too often. I would like to um, uh, ask, though, uh, Dr. Forte, are you familiar with Margaret Sanger? Yes. Uh, you know, they, they give a Margaret Sanger Award still today, and I'm amazed that people accept this idea of eugenics uh, can you tell us the ultimate effect of the biggest supporter, I know of uh, Margaret Sanger, of abortion and the eugenics that she uh, forwarded? That tells us a lot, uh, Congressman. Um, it tells us, number one, that numbers of Supreme Court justices that may affirm this or that doctrine doesn't mean it's a true or false doctrine. In 1928, seven to one justices said that it was legitimate to sterilize a person because she was an inheritor of a gene that made her retarded. And in the famous yeah. words in Buck versus Bell of Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr., three generations of imbeciles are enough. And Buck versus Bell was cited by Justice Blackman approvingly and Roe versus Wade. All right, let me yield the rest of my time to gentlemen from Louisiana, Mr. Johnson. 